This is the class on um, how to use the Earn Your Way to ASI Toolkit. Um, we developed this in the office um, because in years past, I don't know if you noticed on the enrollment form, there's a place if you want to donate money towards the scholarship fund. And we used to have quite a bit of money come in to that account each year that we could divvy up in for next year's scholarships. And in the last few years, that there just hasn't been as much money come in to that account. And so we were trying to figure out a way for people to be able to have more scholarship money, but yet, where is it going to come from? So we sort of came up with the idea of maybe giving families a way to help earn their own money, like scholarship, in a sense, money um, to come to ASI. So we went and, and um, interviewed a lot of business people right in our area, and maybe they were just happy that I wasn't personally asking them for money, but they seemed very willing to, they said there is a lot of money out there for people who um, want to do special things like that, that there's a lot of money that people will give. Um, and like I say, maybe they were just glad that I wasn't personally asking them for money at the time, but, but so it seemed, like a, it seemed like a good idea. So they gave us some ideas of what, what would I ask them, what would, um, you know, I'm sure they have lots of people requesting money, what would put your family at the top of the list, or what would, you know, rise you up. And of course, one, one big thing is the cute factor. Don't be afraid to use the cute factor, they always said. Just, mm -hmm. you know, a, a, a little kid or whatever playing a violin Definitely. or somebody bringing a harp in is um, a pretty big deal <clears throat> to them. So, and we, we sort of, uh, this, this kit comes with five uh, sets of material that you can give to five different businesses. Now you can collect it again and reuse it or whatever, or you can copy it or do whatever you want with it to make more, but it'll have, each, each set will have um, a DVD in it that was uh, taken two years ago at Institute here, and it just gives an overview of the Institute itself. This DVD is also posted on our website. Um, you get um, a letter to you with instructions, actually in suggestions more than instructions. And, th and this year we did update this um, off of the classes last year that we had done of what had worked for different people. And then there's a sample letter of what you might want to write to a business and what your child might want to write to a business. Um, there's a gal that's actually going to be here next week from Florida who last year earned more than their whole tuition and housing and everything. Um, and she had her son to make phone calls to businesses to see if he could come and play for them and tell them what he was doing. And so then he would tell them that he had played for this nursing home or that, you know, to, to show them that he had volunteered in the community and benefited the community with his playing. And so then would they be willing to help him get more instruction? It was, it was sort of a cute thing. And he sort of did it on his own. And he told his mom that only the first call was hard after that it was sort of fun. So, and then we have information. Um, just about the Suzuki method in general, um, what the benefits, what can be gained. There's a, um, a fee schedule so that they know exactly what it's going to cost you to be here. Um, and then there's a form that they send in. There's uh, self-addressed envelopes that we send out with this too. Um, so they put their donor information. You can fill out the family information at the bottom. Um, if they put their email address on this, I send them a thank you email when it comes into the office and I copy you on it. Um, and then if it's at least a $25 donation, they get a nice certificate that I'll send to them in the mail after Institute's over. Um, so that's about the essence of what's actually in the toolkit. Um, last year we had several families earn in excess of $2,000 using the toolkit. I mean, they had big families and they were, one, and one was a teacher training participant who earned quite a bit of money um, to come. So, And this is Sharon, and she has used the toolkit, and so she's here to tell you how it worked for her and, and how they made it work for their families. Right. Um, they, uh, they, well, first of all, they set this up beautifully for you, and I've seen it in the brochures but in the past, and I thought, oh, that's a good idea. And, and uh, the kit's $15, right? Yes. And uh, so you do have to buy the kit, but I thought, you know, gosh, if I can, you know, if somebody will donate fifty dollars. You know, I'm, I'm ahead, right? So, uh, I ordered the kit, and um, I 
thought about who I would solicit, and, and I looked at my daughter's programs from musical theater shows and people who sponsor, you know, we have a spaghetti dinner, the band has a spaghetti dinner every year, um, you know, and they have placemats that people pay, you know, 25 bucks or something to put their business cards. So I thought, those are people that I could solicit. So, you know, if you, if you it's a great marketing tool to really um, help you uh, find people. and. You don't, don't underestimate the cute factor at all because uh, when I just told my mother that uh, we were going to do this, that, that we were going to have um, Jesse look for some sponsorship to help her get to camp, my mom said, oh, well, you know, I would send some money because there are kids here that go to church camp that I give a little money to or, you know, that kind of thing. People are always asking to, you know, um, to uh, sell, you know, like selling butter braid or anything like that. And, and I know I get a little inundated with things from school that, you know, for fundraisers, I'd almost rather just send them 25 bucks and not have the stuff, right? So if you kind of think that way um, and solicit people that you think are willing to donate. And again, with, with my mother, when I told her that there was a letter in here, there's a letter from you and there's a letter from your child. So you sit down together and tailor the letters to, uh, to your um, sponsor people and relatives and uh, tailor it to your instrument. And these letters are great. They're really great. It's a great um, example of what to ask for, what to tell them. And uh, I really followed those letters very well and, and uh, just tailored it to her instrument. She's a harpist and told uh, people what she'd done in the community. And uh, for instance, when I sent it to relatives, I said, um, you know, she, we, she had played a certain piece for her grandfather's funeral and some of these family members were there. And I said, this is a Suzuki piece. And, and uh, you know, if you remember how she played it, Grandpa's funeral, you know, this teacher will be there, and you know, that kind of thing. So uh, you can really tailor make it for whoever you're sending it to. Um, because it, it's sometimes it's really hard to ask for money or ask for help. But again, don't underestimate your child's power because if, if your relatives aren't <laughs> willing to help you, they're more than willing to help the next generation. <laughs> so they're always willing to help a child. And, and when my mother um, said something to some of the people at her church, and this she's in Texas, we are, we're from Chicago, but my mom lives in Texas, and she mentioned it to a couple of people at church and who have heard Jesse play the harp in church down there. And oh, they said, oh, if I get a letter from Jesse, I'll be happy to send her some money. And I, that just really sealed the deal for me because I thought that's really, you know, the power of the child um, writing a, a very intelligent letter and um, tailor making it for people and sending it to, you know, the relatives and to businesses. So we earned, I didn't even send that many out, really. I did it a little later. Uh, she had received a little bit of scholarship money from her school. Um, so I uh, sent these letters out probably a little late. I would start earlier next year and I would send it to more people. Um, when did you start? I started in, let's see, I think I started in May. But I think I would start earlier. I mean, we applied very, very early this year. We applied in April. So, uh, but I think I started middle or late May. And uh, because the deadline's June 15th, so you know, early is always better. Um, and I was trying to get you know people to respond by June 15th. And I told them in the letter also that you know that most of the money was due by June 15th. And and now a couple relatives sent me the money, and I just sent it on to um, to ASI. But most of the people sent it right directly to ASI. And what was really thrilling was getting a little email saying, you have more money in your ASI account. <laughs> you know, so Jesse never do a little victory dance. Yay, more money. So um, 
we earned more than four hundred dollars in you know about three or four weeks and we actually got some money back because if you get more money in I believe I couldn't believe I worried about this I was like what if I get too much <laughs> so, but I called the office and said what happens if you get too much and they send it back to you so you can use it for travel expenses and you can use it you know for living expenses or whatever you need so and for us this year it kind of happened that my other daughter who is not a Suzuki student had to come with us and because um, my husband uh, has a job where he travels and uh, we got the money back and I had to pay for daycare <laughs> for Suzuki this week so it it really worked out beautifully for our family and the reason I had uh, decided to do this was because my husband was out of work from September to March and I thought it would be very difficult for us to to swing this camp because the you know the total cost and all that so um, you know again like I say don't underestimate the power of relatives the power that your child has and of their charm and their talent and in every instance we you know we offered to have her come and play or um, or offered to have her come and meet them to tell them more about it or to come and play and uh, for instance the bank in our town uh, I, I dropped off all the information and um, I don't think we even did a follow-up call but a couple weeks two or three weeks went by and and uh, I got an email from ASI saying the bank sent you fifty dollars so you know and he didn't say you know yeah we want her to come and play or you know whatever but we offered to play in the lobby at Christmas time or you know something like that so um, yes you have a question yeah how old is your daughter and then how do you pick the businesses well my daughter's 12 and uh, she's been going to this camp for five or six years so uh, so I was still cute <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Charming. And I, what, what the kids suggest that you do and what I did was um, uh, frequent the, the, the places where you frequent, where you do some of your business, where they see your face a lot, you know, the local dry cleaner, the local bank, the local, you know, mm -hmm. I, and I said I didn't, uh, I didn't solicit too many places because I, we were getting close, closer and closer with you know some of the relatives that uh, sent in the money and and from her school scholarship. So I um, I could have solicited a lot more. And as she said too, the first you know you just kind of have to take a big breath and say, okay, I'm going to ask for money and you know swallow your pride a little bit and say I'm going to ask for help and uh, just ask whoever you frequent. And I I looked into. Um, you know, like grocery stores. I thought about all those um, those big places that sponsor like cancer runs and things like that. But unfortunately, really large places like the grocery the grocery store chains and stuff like that need a. They don't sponsor smaller things like this. It's usually more of a you know because I thought about the hospital and the jewel store and all of that. But they they're a little bit more particular about who they give to. So I think it's more successful to go locally to the to the smaller shops that you frequent and and as I said the uh, every time you go to a musical theater you know in your town if it's a high school or junior high or wherever people always have little advertisements so check on those people that advertise you know in in those programs mm -hmm. that's where I would go is ASI not for profit and can the donations towards a student be uh, a tax deductible contribution? Our standard statement is check with your tax account. <laughs> <laughs> Typically, it's not without jumping through a lot of hoops. Is ASI not for profit or? It is a non profit. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, and one of the things I was going to mention when she was talking about the money coming in is if you know, if you want to make sure you don't get the late fee and you want to pay your account in full by the June 15th, anything that comes in after that, after you're paid in full, you would just get returned back to you. So, um, so it can come in late. But, uh, yeah. yeah, so we're, we really got our whole, our whole way paid, um, you know, with, with the scholarship she got from the school and with, uh, with, our, with our sponsors. 
and that's that's how we that's how we phrased it in the letter was uh, uh, Jesse said you know I am looking for sponsors to help me get to camp and and again this this letter is very it's very good the way it's written it's written very well and and you can just tailor it to your needs and I did write different letters to relatives than I wrote to business so and I also wrote in there um, you know, how exciting the camp was, and I wrote, as a parent's point of view, I said, you know, I, I'm sure that you've heard a harp before, it's beautiful, imagine 12 harps in a room, what that would sound like. You know, and this is what she gets to experience as a camp member. And, and she wrote in her letter things that she'd done in the community, uh, things that, you know, recitals she's given, nursing home visits, things like that, so, yes. And so did you take them in and drop them off to the businesses, or did you have your daughter go with you, or? I took them in and dropped them off, because she was, she was still in school. I was dropping them off during the daytime. But we worked, yeah, but we worked on the letters together, mm -hmm. and she signed them, and everybody who, of course, sent her something or sent something, she wrote a thank you note to. So, you know, you just have to follow up. And, you know, and I, again, in the future, I think I, if I were to do this again, which I probably will, is is that I would have her telephone people after we drop, you know, materials off. I would have her telephone people and say, "I just want this is just come. I just want to make sure that you've received my materials. If you have any questions, you know, that kind of thing." Have her follow up, and you know, probably wouldn't hurt too after somebody's after camp to go back and ask if you can do something. Playing wise for the people that did donate, exactly you know, because that's going to put you in a good life next, right. for next year. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. yeah. So yeah. any other questions? So yes. Are the, the kids toolkits available still now? So if we want to get one now take with us and look through and read and think ahead for next year? I might have enough materials left for two, two toolkits okay. right now, but otherwise I'm out of CDs. So, okay. um, but, you know, if we had if we had requests for enough, we, could, we would go ahead and get some more DVDs and make up some kits. So. Yeah, well, yeah. It's, yeah, it's never too no, like, early no. to start. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, you don't want to start now for next year, but, but uh, again, I would I would start in April or May, and you know, to because you have to start thinking about these camps in April. And, you know, I think that's when she got her, you know, her school scholarship came out in May. So you know, they think about they have to think about summer earlier and earlier. When we had last year, we had um, a teacher training participant who raised two one thousand dollar scholarships for herself. Um, and she, she, her comment to me was, there is a ton of money out there for people that want to go get it. So she said this was so easy. And then she ended up not coming and, and donating that to some of her students so they could come. But um, her, I was just surprised at her comment that there is a lot of money out there, even for teacher training participants who want to go that direction to get some of their fees paid or mm -hmm. whatever. So, yeah. yeah, I didn't think about doing it for myself. Because <laughs> I, I took violin once, so I'm, <laughs> I'm ready to go on. Yes. I apologize because I came in late, but what's on the DVD? The DVD is excerpts from Institute two years ago. And there's just, it sort of talks you through it. And I think it's on our website. It's on our website. Also, yes. that you can get on the website. Yeah, so, yeah, and the letters that, okay. yeah, some of the letters that I sent um, out, I just said you can go to the website, you know. Because I sent out more letters than I had CDs, and some people are more electronically inclined, and some people are more, you know, physically <laughs> <laughs> like me. <laughs> I'd rather have the you know, DVD. But well, if we could get to the point where we didn't have to put the DVDs in here, if we could direct everybody online, the toolkits would be a lot cheaper. So <laughs> yeah. Does it so. work with an iPad? I know that some some things with Flash don't work with iPads. I am not. I would think our website is worked on that. On, yeah. it, it's supposed to work on your phone, so it should be okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? We see lots of checks coming in next year. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Yeah, try it. It's it's worth it. I would do it again. Well, and what I was going to mention too, one family last year, they're they're actually coming next week again. But last year they've been, they've come to this institute for years and years, and last year they raised two thousand dollars, and it was mostly from friends and family. And her comment to me every time I sent her an email saying she had more money, she says this just brings me to tears. She said we've been doing this forever, and I had no idea that our family and friends will were that supportive of, you know, of our family doing this, and she says it just really brings me to tears to think that, you know, they're doing this for us, so it was, it was pretty cool. Yeah. Did you ever, did you see it with your daughter, did you see any difference in her attitude being here when she earned the money to come here, or is she, maybe she always had a good attitude, who knows? But oh, no, I think she did have now. a really good attitude. She had a, I think she has had a much better attitude. Her practicing has been much better, because, you know, we really, we talked about it, I was like, you know, you, you know, it's not just about you, it's about everyone who helped you. I know kids in and safety it, patrol, they have to earn some of the money to go on yeah. the trips and safety patrols. So it seems like it would be the same. Right. So, yeah, I think she, she got very conscientious in the last few weeks and really, really worked hard because I said, you know, you've, you've got people to thank and that's the way you thank them is, you know, work hard. So I think it really sunk in with her. Well, that was a little bit of the theory behind the toolkit in the first place was we, we didn't necessarily, like I said, we didn't necessarily have the scholarship funds to hand out anymore, but but also the aspect of a child going and, and being a, a participant and earning their own, they're not going to like physically work to earn it, but but that whole, that whole process of being able to be in charge of earning their own, helping to earn their own way. Yeah, and she's, you know, she's involved in a singing group locally, too, where she has to earn her way to, you know, take trips and things, and I think it's been a great learning tool for her and it gives her other, you know, it's really a marketing kit, and it's really given her marketing ideas on how to help her, you know, with that group and with, with her music and with other things that she does, so. So get busy and start volunteering and then <laughs> send them the letter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, any other questions? Did you mention the idea that the franchises usually don't work? I yeah, I was, yes. Okay, yeah, the bigger big. stores. Yeah, yeah, yeah the bigger, I, big box stores or franchises. Most of the time, they'll put you off and say, "We have a policy, or our friend, you know, we can't do this to individuals or that kind of thing." So you're better off working with people who you do business with that are local, like your lawn service or your doctor or your orthodontist or whatever. We found, or service clubs too, um, Kiwanis, Lions. Rotary, Rotary, those kinds of places. Right, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We actually um, did a fundraiser. Um, there's three of our, uh, of our children, and they actually had to plan it and figure out how they were going to do it. And we, we actually did it at a, a local Irish pub in their outdoor courtyard area. And um, it was amazing. We shared a flyer with family friends and asked them to share it with family friends. and. Um, it was as if they were doing project management. They had to figure out how to get it done, the timing, who was going to announce what, um, and they played for about two and a half hours with an intermission, um, some fiddling pieces and some um, Suzuki repertoire, and they actually we raised over $1,100. Wow. Yeah, they have kids raffles and um, the business, um, O'Shea's Pub, that actually gave us the space, comped us the space. And they gave us um, uh, free uh, gift certificates to give out as well, and a couple other items. Um, and it was, it was a win-win for them because we had over 100 people come, and so many of the families ate while they were there. A few um, pints as well. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but they you know, ate and enjoyed it, and the girls took ownership of it. Um, Lori had them do a science board with their bios on it and who they studied with, so they had a picture of them and their bios. And then they drew a picture of Wisconsin and where the camp was at and did a donation box in front of the science board. Um, and it was amazing. I, I was shocked that they were the, able to really play from the beginning to end and it was seamless and they so handled it. Um, my daughter was 10 and the oldest was uh, had just turned 12. Um, so we were just amazed that they handled it so wonderful. They were so confident. Um, 
uh, and then afterwards we let them count everything in the donation box, and they were um, so excited. And so excited. Oh my gosh. So <laughs> it's amazing though, it gets their minds rolling as to gosh, how, what the power of what I can really do and do with other yeah. people and mm -hmm. you know, raise money and what else can I raise money for? So actually gives a reason to practice. Yes, I mean, I if you don't play for somebody, then why stay in the practice room? Yeah. You know? So right. um, it's, that's great. Yeah. It and it brought the friends two. together yeah, too, friends because friends. they were sure. practicing together at our homes in preparation for it playlists, timing each piece out to know how long they were, adding that up to figure out how long they could play. They really coordinated as a, as a group. Team. Yes, a team. Yeah. 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 And, and you should have heard him talk about, okay, that worked, that didn't work, oh gosh, we really need to work on that. You know, <laughs> yeah, just see? their own yeah. ownership. Exactly. They the different pieces, they had to plan that out and know for each piece who was leading it, if they were playing duets or you know, mm -hmm. the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was a really good experience, and we were like, wow, we should have started early. <laughs> right? <laughs> and, all of this, you know. and that's the thing we heard even last year when we did the same lecture, is all the lessons that were beyond earning the money. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, yeah. one woman last year was talking about how her son learned to shake hands and look somebody in the eye and, and introduce himself. And she would even practice that with him, you know, before they went out. So. Um, you know, there's all kinds of other lessons yeah, that the yeah. kids are learning by having, by doing this, and mm -hmm. I think it's a great, great thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anything else? <laughs> I'm trying to think if I have anything else to throughout. Well, we don't have to sit here until 10 or 11. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Thank you.